The Cincinnati Reds added Jamer Candelario late on Wednesday night to an infield that didn't really need him. I feel like something else has to be coming after this. And there's a lot we got to talk through about this move on this bonus edition of Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds, and my name is Jeff Carr, and this is a bonus edition of the Locked On Reds podcast, late night bonus edition, coming to you live as we are reacting to Jamer Candelario being a Cincinnati Red. I, 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 I. I kind of wonder a lot about this and yes, good morning to you too. It's uh, it's very, or really a morning instead of a late night, but man, I'm telling you what, this move is very interesting to me. We're going to talk about what it means for the Reds and really where they're going next, because this is a precursor. This is a move that is, there's more moves coming. I think Nick crawl has got something cooking in the oven here, man. Like signing Jamer Candelario to an infield, it's pretty full right now. It's it's a little con, not really concerning, but confusing a little bit. And let, let's start with the the basics. Jamer Candelaria, third baseman, mostly does play some first base as well, and some designated hitters too. Uh, signed to a three year deal, forty five million dollars. There is a option, Reds team option for a fourth year at fifteen million dollars as well. So all told, could be a four year deal for what's that come out to fifty million dollars. Trying to do math here at two fourteen a.m. on the East Coast. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to me because they've got Noel Marte, they've got CES. And a lot of people in, and in, in, um, uh, shout out to, uh, Sifu Sully here. He says the beginning of the end of Jonathan India. I don't know how this makes sense for an India trade. India plays second base. And as much as, you know, Nick Crawl saying, let's, let's move to first base and things like that. That's kind of a, let's just make sure we get his bat in the lineup type move. I think this is a move that you now wonder about Noel V Marte or you wonder about CES. Jamer Candelario has a nice profile. He's a switch hitter with barely any platoon splits whatsoever. Like you got to squint really hard. He's got good power against right-handed pitching. He's got a better eye against left-handed pitching, higher on base, lower strikeout rate. But at the, at the end of the day, he's the same guy, whether it's a lefty or a righty on the mound. So you'll like that. It's an interesting move, too, because that's not really a guy that David Bell has to worry about putting in and taking out of the lineup. It's it's kind of interesting here. But the Reds already had their infield situated. And, and with India, it kind of felt like India, uh, we were looking for at-bats for him. And now with Candelario, I feel like there's something coming. And um, Reaper Cards had this to say, thoughts on Noel V. Marte? I think... He's the guy that I'm focused on here. I'm not focused on India. I'm not focused on, on, you know, Ellie or Matt McClain a little bit on CES, but I think that this is something I'm focused on though. LV Marte, what does that hamstring injury look like? He was at Reds fest and he was, he was participating in, in all of the, the pictures and the signings and things like that. And, and there was no n really concern there. I don't think he's going to continue to play in the winter leagues or anything like that, but I, I, I kind of wonder if he's not part of a deal now. You know, there's been a lot of reports, and we actually have a, a full episode coming up. Uh, Steve and I will be talking about a couple hours here. It's going to be premiering. Uh, we're going to be talking about a Dylan Cease trade proposal that we both like, and didn't really involve any of these guys. So it makes me wonder if those talks evolved a little bit for Nick crawl. It's so funny. We said that the reds would be super busy. These winter meetings, the winter meetings have come and gone. And as everybody's like flying out of Nashville, that's when the reds make a move. That's when all the big moves happen. Juan Soto traded to the Yankees, Craig Gimbrel signs with the Orioles. And, um, there's one other move. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. Oh, 
not really a big move, but it's a move in our realm. Nick Senzel, he's headed to the Nationals. A lot of interesting things here, but I kind of wonder what's next. Like, I, I, I think that Jamer fits in in a very nice way if you make a move. We'll talk about what that move might look like coming up next. Before we talk about that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, and that's FanDuel. FanDuel is your number one source to make some money off of your sports knowledge. Uh, well, we, we talked about some futures. I know that the Reds are going to be moving, man. They, they are so busy this offseason. If you look on FanDuel, their futures right now for the Nash, to win the National League and to win the, the World Series, those odds got to be getting shorter and shorter by the day. I know just last week they were 45-1. to 1 to win the world series and i believe they were 20 to 1 to win the national league gotta believe those are getting shorter because people are taking notice that nick grawl is making moves so check those out today go to fanduel.com slash locked on and get in on the action they've got a great introductory offer for your first winning money line bet of five dollars you'll get 150 dollars in bonus bets added on so you get more money for winning you got to love that. It's FanDuel.com slash locked on. They've got all kinds of great stuff. I mentioned the futures. You can jump in on the NFL action. Jake Browning just setting the world on fire on Monday Night Football. Is he going to do it again on Sunday against the Colts? Who knows? Might be an interesting bet. And the prop bets on him could be very interesting as well because I know his first game, the over-under was 205 on the passing yards. Got to believe that's coming up after he uh, threw for over three, 340 last, uh, last week. But Check him out at fanduel.com slash locked on. Again, new users win their first $5 money line bet, and you're going to get $150 in bonus bets added on. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL and the official sports book of Locked On. Thanks as always for making Locked On Reds your first, your second, your, your late night listen, early morning listen, depending on where you're hailing from. Uh, glad to have you on board as we. Try to dissect, try to understand this signing here on the screen. But um, Jamer adds an interesting conundrum because we already thought this infield was full, maybe a little over full. And I, there's a lot of folks that are saying this, what Danny is saying. He's saying, buy India. I've seen a lot of, tra- a lot of people saying that India is getting traded now. And I just don't see that happening. This is a more direct impact on Noel V. Marte or CES. Because in my estimation, and I think in a lot of estimations, a lot of, a lot of Reds fans' estimations, Noel V. Marte was going to be the opening day third baseman. I thought it. I, mean, I thought he hit really well in that final month of the season. Now, there's been a lot of people say, and, and there's, there's really good um, uh, it's a really good advice. Whenever you're looking at players, uh, it's, uh, April and September numbers, just throw them out the window, but there was something to know Alvi Marte. I think he was really starting to figure it out. Uh, Steve checking in Steve's at work, so he's, he's not going to be able to jump on today, but, uh, I have so many things to say, but alas, I could make it to record. I'll chime in on this later on Thursday. Yeah, we've definitely got a lot. And, and, and I think there's going to be more from this. We talked about or we will talk about a Dylan Cease trade coming up on the next Lockdown Reds podcast, the next full episode that we've got for you, um, because it, it sounds like the Reds are in on Dylan Cease now. And in, as in, there is a concrete trade proposal that came from verified sources, not like me and Steve trying to, to propose some weird trade or some blog out there that's saying this could happen. There were concrete trade pros and, and, We'll talk a little bit more about this, but there was one that had Rhett Lauder, Chase Petty, had um, Edwin Arroyo, and I believe uh, Connor Phillips was also in this trade, which is quite a lot. So maybe they supplement that and they say, all right, let's not trade all the farm. Let's maybe trade Noel V. Marte and, a co- and, and maybe one other prospect and then a mid-level guy or something like that. I don't know. I'm not necessarily sure how that would work out, but Nick Crawl's not adding Jamer Candelario, and and and, and the Reds are all of a sudden going to carry seven infielders, right? Maybe I don't know. Like, and that's not even counting catchers. I mean, you've got Tyler Stevenson and Luke Maley. That's a given. You've got Ellie De La Cruz, Matt McClain, given. 
all right, let's and now Jamer Candelario is a given. You're not going to sign him three years, 45 million. That's already five guys. So now you're looking at uh, Marte, CES, Jonathan, India. That's eight infielders counting the catchers. Maybe you only carry five outfielders, but we've talked about the weakness of this outfield being the fact that if there's a lefty pitcher on the mound, that means that Benson or Fraley's got to play against him. And they've not been good against those two uh, against lefties. So when it comes to this Jamer Candelario move, I, I just <sighs> the DH. Yeah. But I mean, India has got to be DH Spencer steer has got to be DH CES has got to be DH. Like the designated hitter role for the reds needs to be a rotation. And I think at the end of the day, this is a harbinger. If anything, it's a good sign. For those of us that have wanted the Reds to make a trade, I think this means that the Reds are in on a trade. And Jack, you might be right because it's two fifteen in the it's well two twenty four now in the morning. I might be overthinking this, but I don't know, man. Like eight infielders and five outfielders because you carry thirteen position players and thirteen pitchers. Maybe. I don't know, but I think we will get an answer on this soon. I think that the signing of Jammer Candelario doesn't mean that we now sit for a week or two and wait for a move. I think that Nick crawl has got something that is really close to being a thing. And, and, and Chris, I thought about this. I thought about this but this doesn't make any sense to me. Noel V. Marte starting in AAA doesn't make any sense to me because he was good at the end of last year. Hey, they, they've got to go get themselves an ace pitcher. And I think by signing Candelario, he makes some guys expensive or I I expensive. You make some guys expendable. All right. That, that might be my sign. I appreciate everybody for jumping on here. I, I had to talk some things through. wanted to see what you guys are thinking. Um, see a lot of folks still thinking that, you know, India is getting traded. This was an interesting thing to me because there were reports that the Reds were finalists for Eduardo Rodriguez. And then those reports turned it out to be uh, the sources turned it out uh, to be false. And so he ended up landing with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, that's one 75% chance that. India isn't a red by the end of the day tomorrow. I just don't see that. I know that there's a lot of folks that probably think the, the recent comments from Nick crawl saying that they're not trained. They're not trying to trade Jonathan India right now is a misdirection. Maybe trying to run up the price. I just don't see that happening. I don't think they like the deals in place that they've, they've heard for Jonathan India and they're not going to trade him. Not going to trade him. This one's an interesting to me. If, if the Reds are extending somebody, I, I saw Marte. He is not a, a Scott Boris client. Don't trade Marte. Extend him. Big McFlips. That's a, that's a fun username. Um, but I think that I, I'm i not sure that I'm ready to extend Marte just yet, but that'd be an interesting thing. Overall, though, Jamer Candelario three-year deal, $45 million. There's a fourth-year option for the Reds. It's a team option uh, for another $15 million. Probably makes them a little bit more uh, palatable in a trade in a year or two. But overall, I mean, the Reds just got deeper. You can definitely say that. Jamer Candelario is a talented player. It's just feels like they already had a lot of talent on the infield. And we, we've been talking about if you're getting a bat, you were probably getting a right-handed outfield bat. Jamer Candelario has never played the outfield. And it, it, for anybody wondering, could they be moving Candelario to the outfield? It's never happened in his career. It's far too late. I don't see this happening, or I, I definitely don't see that one happening. But, Greg, I agree with you, man. Something else is about to happen. And that is where we will leave. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on this bonus live edition of the Locked On Reds podcast with me as we are talking about and trying to make sense of the Jamer Candelario signing. Jamer Candelario, talented player, just the situation right now with the Reds. Um, 
it's a lot of a lot of infielders, a lot of infielders. So we'll see exactly how this moves forward. Make sure that you check out tomorrow's full episode or today's full episode, because technically it is Thursday. Thursday's full episode. Steve and I will be discussing a concrete trade proposal that we heard for Dylan Cease and why we love it. Now, that might not necessarily be what the trade proposal is now, but Dylan Cease might, I don't know. Reds might be on the doorstep of that trade. We'll see exactly how that all goes down. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow on your favorite podcasting app because we will be locked on Reds every single day.